Um, I don't know what you think about, um, you know, the re recent shootings of the police, um, you know, officers mm. and the fact that they are asking for the MTTD to be armed. Mm. Uh, but a security analyst, Adam Bona, doesn't think they should be armed necessarily. Mm. They should be given, you know, pepper sprays. Mm. They need to get some more training mm. and more logistics as well. What do you think? Well, I, I think that if you're asking for the MTT officers not to be armed, then you are having, you would have other uh, residual measures to yeah. do with it. For yeah. example, you have regular patrols, mm -hmm. you have, you know, uh, the stops properly policed as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So you have the totality of the police system properly armed and mm. then you can leave the MTTD and maybe the, uh, those walking around, I hardly see any, yeah. not to be armed. <laughs> right. but, the, okay. but, but then if they are not, <laughs> if these guys are not armed properly mm. and then the MTTD is not armed, you're, you're putting them in harm's way. Exactly. Really, if you ask me. I mean, elsewhere where MTTD officers are not armed. They, they are giving have, exactly. body cams, yeah. they are giving handcuffs, mm. they are giving panic buttons to, mm. to press if there's a the challenge. Yeah. We don't have all these things. Exactly. They don't even have bulletproof vests. Yeah. That's we recently Problem. procured 4,500 mm. for a police man of how many? Yeah. So the question is, yes, international best practice may not necessarily demand that we arm them, mm. but per our circumstances, what do we do? Mm. Do we follow international best practice? I, I, I think we should, and I think that they should deploy more of the, like you said, armed mm, policemen mm, mm. in town, because I think they respect them a lot more, exactly. and the military as well, because yeah. I've noticed that, yeah. um, you know, citizens respect but them but a the, bit the, more the military, than the The military MTT. is supposed to be the last resort. Sword. But maybe okay. just to restore order, because for me, there's a lot of chaos. I'm mm. not even talking about, you know, traffic issues. I'm even mm. talking about sanitation and mm. all of that. Mm. And if I had my way, I probably would <laughs> want them to come back, you know, and, and make sure that people behave mm. in town. It's important. It is important. It is. Well, I, I, I also think that it's a, it's a problem of attitude. Mm. Um, people's How do you attitude. Mean? How do you mean? Well, people's attitude yeah. have not been up to it. I mean, if government spends all the money to put um, litter bins across the country mm -hmm. and you still eat and fly it out of your vehicle or you toss it on the ground, mm. it, it doesn't It doesn't. Speak no, but that's well because Can there hasn't been an implementation of some measures to ensure that people who litter mm. or people who go against the law mm. are punished well, there's duly. A, there's every, every assembly has a bylaw, a bylaw that dictates that mm. when you do a, you punish. If you don't have a toilet in your home mm. and you're renting it out, mm. this but is the punishment. You know, let's so, also look so at everybody, the fact that, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, fine, they may have provided some of these things, but then the other side is not exactly being taken care of. Mm. For instance, maybe they provided bins, but who is emptying those bins? Okay. Because mm -hmm. when you visit, mm -hmm. exactly, you visit mm -hmm. some of these places and you realize that the bins are overflowing, people mm. will still continue mm. to, you know, um, yeah. throw out the rubbish, yeah. but the other end is not being taken good care of. True. I, I agree with you. Well, I, I've said that um, recruit more police. It's mm. important that you recruit more. We should more recruit more. more? Yes. Why? We don't, we don't have, you see, Enough. UN's ratio says one policeman to 500 mm. citizens. I prefer quality over quantity. We have, we are, yes, but you are recruiting. Recruitment is a process. You are forming them into something. Mm -hmm. So you are not just handpicking people and dropping in there. I mean, how many times do you find a non-commissioned officer in the military mm. with a pot belly? Mm. <laughs> True. But you would find... Even though I have more, seen. I have seen. No, you, I'm saying a non-commissioned officer, yeah, which would yeah. mean that um, somebody who is, who not, is not above yeah. the rank of W.O. Mm. would not have, you know, hardly would you find that. Yeah. Mm. But you would find a lot more. I mean, a lance corporal mm. in the police is growing a pot belly. A corporal is growing a pot belly. A sergeant <laughs> is growing a pot belly. A chief inspector is growing oh, a pot God. belly. Mm. And, and you're wondering, oh, so what kind of... Again, residual training mechanism do we have? So once they are enlisted, is that all? Yeah. Is that all? And that's why mm. I think that a lot so should go into... So regular training. Yeah. That's yeah. If you look at the six months training that is giving to them, how much of that time is reserved for uh, weapon drills? Mm. For them to be able to handle the Kalashnikov, the AK-47, which is the world's most powerful rifle, mm. if you ask me. Mm. How many times are they trained? Okay, so let's say they give them two weeks to train with that. After the six months, while they are in active service, do we they come back go to back say, for training. go back and go train? Back, and, yeah. you, know, you find a policeman chasing a thief, and they can't even run. They can't that's run. True. It, they can't that's run. true. And that's why I'm against you know, um, recruiting more police officers. Well, I think that they should them. train. Well, well I don't recruit think so. Them. We have enough mm -hmm. for you now. Don't, don't no, wait. Enough. The point is, if we don't have quality, why are we going to add on to the numbers? No, but so there's quality out there. So stop so get politicizing rich? it, okay. and mm. then get in the people who can do the job.
Mm. I've always had a problem with NADMO because when the government changes and most of the faces in NADMO change. But NADMO yeah. is a quasi-military yeah. organization that's supposed to be providing real help to real people. Mm. And I'm sad because when the two policemen were shot at, mm. suddenly the police vehicle that was there became a stone. Yeah. They put the man on a motorbike. Basic first aid yeah. will mean that you put pressure on the wound mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then you try yeah. and stabilize the person. Yeah. Then you, so that's basic. Yeah. Sure. Now, so you're asking, what kind of training did they have in terms of first aid right. training hmm. to, to even be willing to jump onto a motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> you I are thought hurt. that was even more dangerous. Exactly. You, so you, really you have contributed to your killing. You yeah, died yeah, wrongfully. You died. Yeah. Exactly. Wrongfully. Exactly. So, okay, anyway. so the recruitment process must go, must go on. It, it must go on. Well. And it must be done with, with a certain level of sacrosanity. Mm. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're done with our rants. We're looking forward to you <laughs> ranting as well. You can join us on social media as well. Let us know mm. what you think about everything that's been going on all week. Um, you know, I, I also saw a story about a little boy who was declared missing only for his dead body oh. to be found in yeah. the bush Bushes, just yeah. yesterday Sad. or so. Yeah. And so whatever you want to tell us, do so via social media, TV3 Ghana, of course, at Bella Mundi as yeah. well. At Hughes underscore on air. And at Crystal underscore Y-U-T-U-M-C. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> so 